Hello and welcome to LabVIEW Advantage. In this video, we'll learn how to launch multiple clone VIs in LabVIEW. First of all, we'll start with creating a new VI. First of all, we'll create a, a simple VI that you will be using to clone. Clone basically means we can have multiple instances of the same VI running in parallel. So, I'm going to generate a random number and I'll use a vertical progress bar. Now I am going to simulate this as a tank. So whenever I'm generating a random number, this will be filled. So I'm gonna modify the icon very quickly. I'm going to put the random number icon over there and now it is ready I'm going to save that as random tank now put a while loop so that it will be the value will be generated continuously so the main reason why we're creating this code is we'll be calling this VI simultaneous copies of this VI as a clone. So in your application, there can be many requirements. For this one, you need to select the pre-allocated clone uh, in the execution part. Uh, in window size, I'm going to select the current window size. And next thing, I'll go into the window appearance, customize, and I'm going to show the front panel. So whenever I'll be running this VI, the front panel will be shown. I'm going to close this VI now. Let me organize the uh, controls, my user interface. Now the next thing I'm going to write a code to call that VI from the another VI. So I'm going to save as a clone creator. Next I'm going to add a file path and I'm going to select the random tank from there so that the file path is got over there. So now we'll be creating a for loop which will be used uh, before that uh, we'll be using the uh, while loop with the event structure if you are not familiar how to use the event structure please google uh, or search for the how to use event structure in labview in my labview advantage channel so once i've done it uh, i'm going to create a control so whenever i Press stop, this loop is going to stop. So I'm going to add an event. I select the stop button. So whenever I press stop, this loop is going to stop. So again, like if you are not familiar with the event structure, please uh, search for the event structure video in my LabVIEW Advantage channel. Uh, next, we'll use a for loop. Uh, here, like uh, we'll be creating the references of how many uh, copies or the clones of the particular VI we want to use. So I'm going to pass the file path. Uh, rather, I'm going to keep that inside as well. That is fine. So that file path will go over there. Uh, that should actually go in, uh, into the second input terminal file path. Next, uh, we need to provide the options over the options is basically the code uh, for uh, what is required uh, in the beginning. I'm going to create a constant. So this actually requires the uh, front panel or the connector pane of the particular VI I want to call. So I'm going to drag a copy of that one over there. If I can, as you can see, the connector pane has been changed. Uh, next thing. 
uh, since it is between 0 to 1, it uh, does not actually make uh, much more readable. So what I'm going to do it is I'm going to change the range. So it must be somewhere here. Okay, I think it's inside the scale. Okay, not that one. Yeah, here it is on the bottom. Okay, so it's at the moment zero to 100. Uh, I'm going to put zero to one. So whenever the value changes, it will increase or decrease simultaneously. Uh, rather than doing that, what I'm going to do it is like I'll uh, keep the range 0 to 100 itself. So rather I'll go to the block diagram and then actually multiply the random number uh, by 100. So I'll be able to generate the value between uh, 0 to 100. So this way like I'll be able to uh, generate a far more readable value in my random tank so that will be 0 to 100 just to make my code a little bit readable uh, next thing i'll provide the options here options are basically the code uh, that is going to tell uh, how i'm going to run the code uh, x80 is going to uh, generate the is going to call the uh, reentrant vis uh, reentrant vis are particular kind of vis uh, that can be called with multiple instances here the for loop is going to execute uh, the number of times i have uh, specified in the number of clones control so if i select a four then the loop is going to run four times and that is going to generate four different references and after i press it up i'll be able to run the vi by using the asynchronous call it is going to launch the multiple clones of that particular VI. So now my code is ready. Now I'll be able to run my code. So before I run it, I'm going to uh, clean my diagram. So I'm going to arrange my front panel. So once it's ready, I'm going to launch the number of clones. First of all, what I'm going to do it, I'm going to select one new one. So as you can see, I got one uh, is launched at the moment. I stopped that one. Now the next time what I'm going to do is I'm going to select four or three clones. As you can see, I've been able to launch three of them. Uh, but I think like uh, the front panel is too small so that like I won't be able to like move them around. So what I'm going to do it is like I'm going to stop all these three clones first of all. And then I'll go and then modify the front panel actually a little bit longer so that I can actually drag them aside. So I'll save them again, modify the window appearance. And then what I'm going to do it is like I'm going to change that to 10. And if I run it, as you can see, like I'm able to run 10 different instances of the same VI. So if your application requires for you to perform several multiple uh, operations which are independent from each other, then you can actually perform this kind of operation. Uh, this means like in this case, if I was not using this way, I had to create 10 different VIs. I hope you like this video. Please like, share, and comment on this video. And please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for future lab view videos.